Today we have a special guest coming to the shop. Jake Fowler from Jake's Custom Knives is going to stop by for a visit, so I thought I would clean up real quick. Welcome to Black Bear Forge, where I hope to educate, inspire, and spark the imagination of anybody interested in the ancient art and craft of traditional blacksmithing. We have Jake Fowler from Jake's nice Custom Knives in the shop today. He's just out traveling and thought he would stop by, so we're going to do a little forging project together. I think we're going to look at making a hammer. Just what I need to learn how to do. <laughs> Wonderful. So let's find some material and let's get to work. Let's do it. I'm looking forward to it, John. Great. Thanks for having me. We're starting with six inches of inch and a half round 1045 for a hammer. And we're going to take this to the hydraulic press and we're going to see if we can upset that down into about a half inch square bar. Or excuse me, an inch and a half square bar. Well, I missed the first squish on this because I forgot to turn the camera on. So here's Jake doing the second upsetting squish under the hydraulic press. First time under the hydraulic press, he looks like an old pro. The end goal here is to try and make an inch and a half square bar out of this. 1045 makes a good hammer, but it's hard to find in square bars. So you almost always have to square up a, a round bar. Yeah, we are now at four inches and just a little over inch and a half square. So if we clean the square up, we're going to be just perfect. Now, of course, this would be easier done under the bull hammer, but it still doesn't work. flat dies under this, we'll leave this nice and square. I think I'm going to need to work on the ends a little more. Punch an eye. But we should let Jake have a turn under the treadle hammer. Slower than I thought. It's as fast as you are. Okay, you ready? Let's do this. Turn the camera on, I did. 
So we'll just go a couple of hits to get started. start with here. Right there. Yep. This punch is serious overkill, but. <laughs> working. It is going in. I guess it's hard for you to tell how straight I'm hitting too. It's funny after blacksmithing for almost a year now you go to just pound a nail in or something like that. It's amazing how you just can't miss anymore. We're gonna need to get this higher. That we got a good mark and it looks centered. We are ready. Seems like it. There we go. Should uh cool the punch off. For everybody watching, this is an old punch that uh, I don't use very much. But since I usually don't work with a striker, it's the best one I had for the purpose. And it will get the job done. It also doesn't heat up as fast, which is nice. I think I'll cool it down anyways. Starting to stay put, that's something. Right. Does that keep it from sticking? Yeah, it's a punch lube from Quick and Dirty Tools Company. Grease and graphite and who knows what. A little molybdenum or something. Some nice, nice holes going there. Okay. Really getting closer than it seems because we're through about a third of the way from both sides. It's not going to be long before we're shearing the slug out. Punch on the bottom is starting to bulge out, so we're getting close. Stop. Oh, close. Keep going. We have to break that slug off separate. No kidding. Stop. Yeah, it's wow. going to come out. Go ahead and strike the side there. there you go. Let the 
punch going red hot. The punch, by the way, is made out of an old jackhammer bit. So the thick side is hot because it's been down in the fire. Let's go ahead and work this right here. Kind of jumpy. Yeah. A little more square there. I think we're getting a lot better. Definitely. need to square the whole hammer up a little bit I think but I do that on the treadle hammer or we might let's uh work this side of the eye again that one's yep. still a little bit thick That brought that back in line a little bit. Definitely. A lot closer. Amazing how fast that side cooled down compared to the other side. Yeah, and we'll do it to the... Cool. So here's what we've ended up with. That eye, unfortunately, is fairly off-center, and that's partially due to not doing a very accurate layout. We were a little too cavalier about it. Typically, I would square up the material, then let it cool, and do a good measured layout and put a center punch mark in. But we just went for it, and we did get an eye through. A lot more work than it should have been, and it's a little bit off, but I think we're going to save it, and it's going to be a usable hammer. That thing is noisy. It is noisy. Jake's turn under the treadle hammer. Really all we're trying to do here is just get this squared back up and get the sides parallel and even again. Like I said earlier, being a little cavalier about punching the eye, we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot. and It won't be the best hammer eye, but it is going to be functional. And we are going to persist and be successful, one way or the other. Glasses. Safety first. Is it more or less? I can't. Hard to see. There it is. Okay, once we get a good solid surface on the bottom, it starts to go a lot faster. Definitely. Up. Get another grip. Let's flatten it out a little bit.
up. So this will want to spit back out at you. Dropping that down to try and recenter the, the peen there. That's pretty much it. Okay, get that hot again. That is Things cool. noisy. Do I need to hold it up more or down more? Um, just, just kind of watch what it's doing, and if it's, if it's pushing down, then drop your hands. Okay. Or just, just kind of experiment with it if it's. Sometimes it's easier to do it this way. Just trying to straighten it out? Yeah, just make it symmetrical is what I'm aiming for. just refining the peen on this. It's like I need to make a pair, pair of tongs just exactly that size. Right, just four hammers. That's looking pretty good. Time for the drifting. Yep. Now I drive it through from the, the, the back side too, yeah. Or that same punch? The sa same one, but from the other side. Yeah, so you have to pick it up off the ground. And then you ought to be able to get that little one in there. You need me to hold the hammerhead? Oh, well, maybe. Oh, I guess there is a little bit, I think. Maybe not. He's quiet. No, need to go the little further on that first one. I'm not sure if I was going too far or not. Oh, you could drive it all the way through if you need to. Oh. Definitely easier with two people. Yep. Should get it hot again, but let's see if that little drift is going to fit. Oh yeah, yeah, that'll work. Cool. Okay, right. stop. Yeah, that works. I go to swing sideways just to. Let's get that hot again. 
I don't think. Get this side here. pretty wide now. Yeah, let's heat it up and put it under the treadle hammer and just level that off and that should leave a uh, very, the yeah, very nice straight-sided hammer with a very good oval eye in it. It's going to need a little bit of cleaning up, but otherwise I think we have saved it. Cool. So that's when you're, when you're punching the hole for these, that's how you do it typically to get the hourglass shape is go from one side with the... Yeah, you never punch. drive the drift all the way through. Okay. You just drive it halfway through so that it's fat on both that makes Sides. so much more sense. Yeah. <laughs> See, and that's something you can't learn on YouTube. <laughs> or I think you probably could. If you you could if you were just paying attention to what we were just discussing. That's true. <laughs> it is definitely, there's just so many little things. It's amazing. And that's what a cross section of a hammer eye should look like right there drawn on the hood. And that's the hourglass shape. Um, just to level out the sides. Just to level, okay. Yeah. That's definitely a good workout. Yeah. That looks like a pretty good eye. Not too bad. A it's up up to your satisfaction. It's your hammer. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't go too flat, but I wouldn't, uh, it, it was just an awfully round eye to start with. So. It is, yeah. Alright. How's that looking right there? Too flat. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Still a little off center, but I think it we can fix that. It's kind of like twisted a little too, isn't it? Yeah. Is there, how can you fix that, I guess? Uh, that's why I think you might have to run it through the middle a little bit and just, just clamp, clamp it up straight and then... But you can also fix some of that with a, the, the handle by carving a handle that just fits, fits that, that eye properly crooked and is straight where you <laughs> hold it. Right. Alright. So is that pretty good right there? I think so. Cool. Well that perhaps was not the cleanest forged hammer that I have ever done. But it's going to be a functional hammer. Jake is pretty good with a grinder. If you go over to Jake Fowler Knives on YouTube and take a look at some of his stuff, you can see some amazing work he's done. He definitely knows how to grind looking at the knives that he makes. Yeah. We ended up with just about a two and a half pound hammer. It's a little heavy. By the time it's ground and cleaned up, it'll probably be a little bit under two and a half pounds. But that's what we were going for. So it's been a successful day. And it's been a fun day, hanging yeah. out in the shop with other people is oh, always a lot of fun. Definitely. I enjoy doing it and I strongly encourage you guys to get together with somebody else and spend a day in the shop. Your shop, their shop, whatever. Just get out there and get some work done. I hope you like the video. I hope you can head over to Jake's channel and watch some of his stuff. Subscribe to his channel if you enjoy knife making. Give this one a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. But do get out to the shop whether by yourself or with a friend, and stay safe, wear your safety glasses. Always. We'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Enjoyed it very okay. much. Thank you Wonderful. for having me out here. <laughs> we'll do it again sometime. Definitely. Hopefully sooner than later. <laughs>